does draw huge crowds and can bring its own kind of reward and stardom. There were thousands of pounds riding on this classic clash between London's two most notorious street fighters, Roy Pretty Boy Shaw and Lenny McLean. McLean was the winner and took the title of the governor, the oldest man in London. Lenny has earned a few grand to say the least at street fighting, but his real bid for stardom is only just beginning. Plans are afoot to make a Hollywood movie based on his life, and these days he spends as much time with his scriptwriter as he does in the gym. Well, I've been fighting since I was eight years old. I'm 38, you know, uh, and also about 15 years ago, someone took me down to uh, Epsom, Derby Day. Uh, and, I, and they stuck me up against some gypsies and I was having some tear-ups and uh, I'd done the business. And I thought, well, this is a good way to get a living. So then I started fighting people for money, like, all around the country. The artist men, like, say, like, South East, North West, fight anyone for money. Then we started going up north, uh, all around the country, just fight anyone for money. What do you say about it? I mean, the, the way you earn a living is not easy, to say the least, is it? Oh, shit, how you earn your money? I mean, I... Uh, to me, someone working with Michael Five, that is hard work. It's a killer. Now, for me to go and have a tear up with someone, uh, it's not hard work. You know, have a tear up and uh, get you a few quick down. Go to the hospital, see him out. There you go. Do you want to return? Oh, well, I'm on now. They can't see that anyway. Jab and boot job. Then that's going to be extremely violent, and I'm going to nut you. And if I can bite your nose off your face, I will. They've suffered. You know, they, they, they go to the school, they have to be amateurs, they have to go through all the assholes or all the pressures to get where they are. Remember that they worked at what they was good at, right? Now they're at the top. Good luck to them. I mean, Henry Cooper, good luck to him. Still cashing in now. He's probably getting more dough now than what he was when he was fine. Good luck to him. He's done it. He was the one who got in with Ali and all that little mm. firm. he done it. He tried and done it. So why shouldn't he cash in on his fame? Good luck to him. See, you ain't happened overnight, of course. People are going to think, oh, he must have happened overnight, but you've, you've done that. Yeah, I've been fighting since I was eight years old, and I, I've been fighting for money, since, like I said, like a few years, And uh, mm. but but we're behind the scene mob. We're behind the scene mob. We're not like, we're the people like, oh, like he's not a nice guy, no, he's mad. Look at his eyes. He's not all there. But we don't care. We don't, we don't interfere with them. My woman and kids don't think I'm off me, they think I'm a lovely dude. street fighting to the bright lights of the film world. Every sporting hopeful must dream of becoming a celebrity, but there is a school of thought that says that's just when your troubles begin. So the last hurdle is coping with the pressures of stardom. You under the pressure? Since the great sponsorship gold rush in sport, the pressure on top players has become much greater. They have to have the right image now. So we thought we'd give three of our budding stars, Tony, the ice ball player, Ronnie, the snooker prodigy, and Lenny, a taste of a special course created to help sportsmen cope with success. A meal at Frederick's restaurant is the last lap of the course run by Kate Hoey. This is the last part of a course which lasts about six months, mainly because a lot of the young people who are involved in sport are hopefully going to be very well off. They're going to be put into situations where they are under pressure. And coming here today is just going to give you an opportunity to try eating some things that you may not have tried before. Uh, looking at a restaurant in a way that we hope would make you feel that you could go into that restaurant at any time and not feel intimidated. Lenny, snails, how does that make you feel about eating snails? Slow and slippery. Slow and 
to be. You've never tried them before? Yeah, I'll try anything. Right, you're going to try one, Lenny? Yeah. Use your machine. Right, I'll get that one. That's the biggest. Oh, well, sorry about that. Look at him laughing at them. It's his, his turn next. You've got to push it right in. Well, can I, is, is just put it straight in my mouth, all the way there. Well, usually if you hold it firmly, it, it should make okay, it come out. Okay, I've got it, look at that. Oh, look at that. Right into your mouth. Yeah. Oh. What do you yeah. think? Yeah. Truly. Nice. Absolutely beautiful, because I know it's their turn. <laughs> mm. What do you think? Lovely. Well, wet and slippery? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, what has the great sports bonanza done for Londoners? Well, it's given quite a few a chance of the big time, certainly more than in the bad old days before the big money moved in. But more importantly, it's raised the hopes of thousands of actually cracking it. But whatever happens, never forget this. Life at the top can be very, very tough indeed. How are them snails, Lenny?